Okay, video number four in the How to Wire Schneider PLC series. We're working with the Modicon M221 family, and today we are going to be taking a look at sourcing inputs using a relay style model of PLC. Before we begin, though, you must, you must, you must, you must exercise caution with this one because sourcing inputs can create danger from unwanted PLC triggering. In other words, the PLC can turn stuff on or turn stuff off during a fault if the DC supply is grounded on the negative. Watch video two in this series all on syncing and sourcing. I go over top of dangerous inputs and dangerous output types if you need more information. We're not gonna deal with that in this video. You've had the warning in front of you. Just follow it if you don't understand it. Watch the other videos, you should be fine. Before we begin, let's take a look at the relay model that we are utilizing. We're looking for a R at the very last of our model number. It should be prefaced with a TM221, and then the rest of the letters and numbers that are gonna be in the middle aren't gonna matter much. You're gonna have one or two here telling us whether it's cartridge or monolithic style, and then you're gonna have two numbers over here telling you had the total number of IO points, 16, 24, 40. Like we said, those two are not going to be as critical for what we're looking at. It is really just the R over here. Referring back to my manufacturer's data sheet, we are gonna be doing a sourcing style, which sourcing means that we are going to have a continuous path from my positive to my common of my inputs over here. And you'll note that they do it showing this thing running through a fuse holder and then into the common. We are gonna go make sure we apply that common. And then we are going to go and use our negative or zero volt as the stinger that we are going to go and take around to my individual field devices. We can still utilize the fast inputs, whether in syncing or sourcing. Do note that they are not present on all of them, but these fast inputs are gonna give you the ability to go up to 100 kilohertz in speed to go and pick up high speed sensors, optical uh, flashing from infrared remotes, things like that. But we have to make sure that we take them into I0, I1, or I6, or I7. Let's move on to the Descriptions that we have inside of here of what the input powers themselves are. The inputs take very little power, seven milliamps tops that we are going to go and have. They are rated for 24 volts DC, and that 24 volts DC that we are going to go and have does have some good ranges and some bad ranges. Here's 24 volts, here's zero volts. What we see down here is that voltage at state one, in other words, anything that's gonna be read as being a high, it's gonna be anything above 15 volts. So we'll read anything higher than 15 volts incoming as a high. There's also going to be a low state voltage that is going to be below 5 volts that we are going to go and have. That's guaranteed to be read as a low. And what that leaves us with is that leaves us with an undefined range. And the undefined range doesn't mean that nothing is going to go and happen. What it means is that if you bring a voltage in into here, we'll say we bring 12 volts into here, there will be operation, but Schneider refuses to guarantee whether it's going to give you a high or whether it's going to give you a low. Just don't be an idiot about it. It's rated for 24 volts, so make sure you're bringing in a proper 24 volts. Anything that falls down below the 15 volt line is once again, as we said, going to cause erratic operation. It cannot be guaranteed. Don't worry too much if your voltage is a little bit high. They can go and operate anywhere from 19.2 to 28.8 is going to be the nominal range, even though 24 is our actual target. Last thing that we're looking at on this sheet over here is going to be the embedded power supply. There is a built-in DC power supply in these units. It does put out 24 volts plus 15, or sorry, uh, drops down as far as minus 15 or raises as much as 10%. It is isolated. It does have a maximum current of 250 milliamps. If you compare that with my inputs over here operating at seven milliamps for my 16 style that I have over here, I've only got nine of these. So that means that I've got a grand total of 63 milliamps of draw out of that 250 milliamps. So I've got plenty of power that's going to be on board for these ones. Even if I go all the way up to the 40 class, that one has got 20 inputs that I'm going to go and have. Those 20 inputs are still only going to go and pull 140 out of there. So lots of power if I'm only putting in dry contacts, push buttons and things of the like. Okay, let's take a look at our pectoral that we have over here. We see that we have got the proper field wiring. We can follow that through. We got AC being fed in, taken through a fuse holder, taken into my PLC. This one over here, 
the CE16R is the one in the family that can be fed with anywhere between 100 to 240 volts AC. We've got it fed with 240 on this one, that's fine, and properly fused down and properly grounded down. What we can do in this case is we can now feed out of my onboard power supply, shown up top over here as being 24 volts and a zero volt. Why don't I just zoom that in a little bit so you can see what's going on there. 24 volt plus 24, zero volts. That's gonna be my negative right over there. We said that for this one, what we were looking to go and do was have sourcing. And sourcing always means that I'm gonna go from my 24 volts to my common. Don't go directly over like that. That would be a mistake. Remember that we need to go and apply some circuit protection. So we're gonna go and fuse our plus 24 and take it into my common like that. Now we have got it set up for sourcing. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to go and take a negative stinger from here and we're gonna take it out and we'll just drop it off at every one of my field devices. And then the last thing that we need to do is go from my field devices and take those back to inputs. And you should be able to now trace a complete pathway. We'll do it right over here from my positive DC through my fuse holder back to my common through the inside guts of the PLC explained in video two, back up through one of my inputs over here and all the way back home to the power supply over here. If you can't trace a complete pathway, this thing is not going to go and work. Once again, the most common mistakes usually made with these is that people will say, well, I'm gonna go set it up for sourcing. They'll take the negative out and around, but they forget to have anything that is jumping from here to here. We do wanna put that jumper in with a proper fuse holder, uh, but even this would be better than you know leaving it like this. This way, there would be no way for that to be monitored. So we'll put this one in again proper, like so. Perfect. That covers this model over here. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go and add in some additional loading. This diagram that we have over here is identical as far as my AC power supply, my fuse holders that I'm going to go and have, feeding over for the power for this one over here. The new components are all of these inside of here. We've got another AC supply being brought in feeding into a breaker, which is then feeding into this DC power supply. It's converting from my AC into my DC, giving us a plus 24 and a minus 24. As we said in the first one, what we are gonna look to do is we are going to go and source. So we are going to go and run my positive out. And then from here, we take it through that fuse holder. And then we are going to take it into my common. Now we have got ourselves set up for sourcing over here. Next thing that we are going to do is then we can go and take our negative out and our negative is gonna get taken around to all of my devices. Now we do have a new device inside of here. This is gonna go and be a sensor. We're gonna use this thing with a high speed um, counter, one of our high speed encoder wheels that we're gonna have. So we'll just say high speed sensor over here. These things will take in most cases between 70 to 100 milliamps a piece. So although I could feasibly get away with feeding a single one from my onboard power supply, usually when we have got sensors, whether they're going to be optical sensors or whether they're going to go and be inductive or proximity sensors, we're usually going to feed them from an external power supply just so that we don't end up loading down our PLC beyond what it can take. That's what we're doing over here. Secondly, because we are dealing with a sink, or sorry, with a sourcing style, the sourcing style means that we need to take a negative back into our inputs, which means that my style of sensor needs to be NPN. Once again, the memory trick for that is that the very first letter of it is going to go and tell you the polarity. In this case, N is for negative. And yes, if you're wondering, a PNP would be a positive output. NPN gives me a negative output on that lead there. Okay, I'll erase that so I got a little bit of room there. Let's finish distributing our positives and negatives. I guess we might as well finish with the positive. We're partially done. So we've got it brought here from my power supply. We'll also come from my power supply. We've taken it through my fuse holder over here. So it's protected. We're now going to take it up to the brown. If you've never used these European style before, they've got their own color coding. Brown is going to be positive. Blue is going to go and be negative and black is going to go and be my signal out on these three wire style. So we've got my red, my positive, connected to the positive over here. 
Let's finish our negative next. My negative is going to come out of here and we are going to go and distribute it around to all devices. So we can take one of these just directly up over there. We can take another one of these and we can take it over and distribute a negative stinger to all my push buttons that I'm going to go and have over there. Oh, I'm sorry, I put that to the wrong one. My apologies. Uh, that is going over to the blue over here. The blue is going to go and be the negative that we are going to have. Last thing that we need to do is take in all of our signals. Now we said that we're gonna use this as a high speed sensor, which means that it can only work with I0, I1, or I6, or I7. So we're gonna select one of those. We'll pick I0 because it's closest, and we will go from my signal off of this one over here. We'll make a connection right over there. We will go to my I0. So we'll go from I0 up and to there. That now takes my high speed sensor in. I've got power supply to it to go and power up the microelectronics and I've got my signal being sent back in. The rest of these we can take into available inputs and then program them in later on. So now we've got a complete setup for a sourcing style using our relay input style or sorry a relay output type of modicon. Last one that we will look at is once again a relay type but this one is going to go and have the M, which means it's the monolithic style. The monolithic style has got vertical terminal strips and it doesn't have that cartridge on it where I'm able to go and change out a bunch of different analog stuff. Towards the back end of this video series, you're gonna see a bunch of cartridge work we're gonna deal with. Let's just take a quick look at my AC pathway. We see my AC pathway, we take AC in to a DC power supply. That DC power supply, we see that we then feed out through a fuse holder and we apply power to my PLC, these are 24 volt powered rather than 120 volt powered. We see we've got the negative running back as well. So we'll erase all of that. We're not using that right now. We're here to go and take a look at the sourcing inputs. Once again, sourcing means that we are going to go and be looking at, let me just write that, sourcing is a positive common. So we're gonna come from my power supply over here. We are going to go and pick up a fuse holder. And then from that fuse holder, we are going to go and run a lead that is going to go down to my common of my PLC. Now common zero and common zero that we have right down there, a little hard to read like that, it's enhanced there. Uh, common zero and common zero are connected internally. You don't need to make an external connection. Some people do feel better about that. So as we said before, you know, uh, don't feel bad if you feel like you want to stick one around the outside like that as well. It doesn't do anything, but some people feel better with feeling every uh, terminal strip filled out like that. We've now got my positive applied. Next thing that we are going to do is we are going to go and apply my negative around. So my negative is going to come out from my power supply and we're going to take it up. We are going to feed a stinger to every single one of my feed devices. And we might as well take it all the way over to my sensor over here. Uh, that we had. So we will take that one over here. We're going to take it to the blue because the blue is the negative for this one. The next thing that we can do is we can go and take in my signals. Now, if this is being used as a high speed counter, we need to take it into I0, I1, or into I6 or I7. The black wire is my signal. So we are going to go and take that one down and put that one into, we'll place this one inside of I7 this time. The rest of these can go into available inputs. We can place them into whichever inputs we want. We'll place that one in I2. We'll place this one into I0 that we are going to go and have over here. And the very last connection that we now need to make is we need to finish powering up this sensor. We don't apply a full 24 volts to the sensor, if it's rated for 24 volts, obviously, then it's never going to be able to go and power up, run the microelectronics that are inside of it that actually give it its, you know, ability to sense the oscillator. You're going to go and have a little, uh, usually like a shot key trigger inside of there and a bunch of other stuff that takes care of picking that up. So let's take our positive from here. We want this to go and be fused. So we are going to go and take it to the fused side of my input over here. You could go and put out a proper set of DIN rail uh, distribution blocks. That would be far prettier. We're trying to keep the drawing as simple as possible, but I'm never going with more than two wires underneath the terminal. All right, that covers your monolithic one. This is a ugly, hairy, you know, the lines are going all over the place, but it shows you the correct electrical connections for a sourcing type of input.